Hello everyone in CIS 115. We're continuing on with our exploration of ciphers. The Visioneer cipher is a very strong cipher. It seeks to uh, eliminate the deficiencies that we've talked about in the substitution cipher and it remains one of the strongest ciphers that we have and interestingly enough uh, if you watch this um, video that I have on the checklist you will have a good historical background on uh, the development of this cipher but it is very old uh, the cipher that is. It, let's look at the Wikipedia material here and you can see some of what's in that historical video. So Wikipedia uh, rightly attributes the development of this cipher to an Italian named Bellesso and he wrote a book about 30 years before Blaise de Visioneer, uh, who it's named after, uh, presented it as a uh, means of cryptography uh, to Henry III. So uh, this cipher was really uh, developed even uh, prior to Balasso by uh, an Italian, uh, another Italian, uh, and presented to the Pope to encrypt some information. So this thing, as you can see, was developed in 1553, and 500 years later, uh, roughly, it was finally broken by uh, Babbage, Charles Babbage, using a uh, computer. So, uh, the Visioneer cipher was um, also used by the Confederates in the Civil War. This is a uh, picture of a cipher disk that lets us implement the Visioneer cipher. These are very valuable if you happen to find one. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, well, about the Visioneer cipher, as you can see here in the material, it's a polyalphabetic cipher. Now, in layman's terms, what that means is that it uses a different key for every letter in the message. Now, you remember when we were talking about the substitution cipher, there was one key that we used to encrypt and decrypt the whole message. And that could be broken using cryptoanalysis techniques, specifically frequency analysis. The Visioneer cipher, because it uses a different key for every letter in the message, it uh, is much more secure. So uh, let's see if we can encrypt something using the Visioneer cipher by hand. This is a lot of work, so, uh, but you have to understand how to do it by hand in order to implement it on the computer. So here I've got a message that I want, a plain text message, Visioneer is strong. I want to encrypt this using the Visioneer cipher. So what we have to do if we're going to encrypt this is we have to agree on a keyword or a key to use. 
And I don't know if you've seen the movie The Da Vinci Code, but uh, that's a good uh, uh, name to use here for our key. So let me go ahead and and here's my plain text. Let me undo that. Here's my plain text message here in the white row. I'm going to write the key above that. So uh, first letter in the key is D and then A V I N C I and then we write the key again. You just keep writing the key over and over. D you just skip the blanks. So A V skip that blank I N C I D A so I just wrote the key repeating over and over now keep in mind that the longer key that you have the more secure this is so um, using a, a short key like da Vinci is probably not the most secure way to implement this the most secure way would be to use a, a key that was as the same length as your message but anyway so in order to do this we need the visionaire square which is what that historical video uh, talks about being developed and presented to the Pope so let's make a visionaire square if we go back to the checklist here an easy way to make that square is this tool on this site that I clicked on the checklist and this is the visionaire square so across the top are the letters that we will use in our plain text message across the side here are the letters in the uh, key, the letters of the key each one of these letters a b c d represents a key so let's look at these for a second our a key is exactly the same as the letters above it okay but when we go to the B key you'll notice that the B is shifted to the left by one C is shifted to the left by two and D is shifted to the left by three so you can see that we're going to have a different key here for each letter in the message so let's uh let me move this to a new window and make it smaller now maybe I can see it as at the same time that I'm working in my document here okay so we want to we want to encrypt this message so I'm still trying to get things sized appropriately where I can see both things at once and there we go okay so we've written our key above it so to encrypt the letter V in our plain text I need to use the D key so this row right here is the D key all right so I'm gonna find the V up here on the top and there's the V and I'm gonna come down and right there at the intersection of the D and the V is a Y so that's the first letter in my cipher text next key that I'm using is an A and we know that the A key doesn't change anything so I can just go ahead and write an I there the next one we're using the V key 
V is all the way down here, this row, and of the V key that I'm using, I'm going to encrypt the letter G. So this is the row for G. So it looks like I need to write a B. So I'm going to encrypt that to a B. The next one is an I, in the that's the key I. So right here, this is my I key. Okay. And in using my I key, I'm going to encrypt an E. So here's the E. I'm going to write an M. An M. Now you can make this easier. You see how I'm having to scroll so much? One nice thing about this little tool is you can enter your keyword right here. D-A-V-I-N-C-I. And let it build you a square that only has those keys. So you don't have all the unnecessary keys here to have to scroll through. So there's what it looks like if you build your square. You notice it reduced it a good bit. Okay. So, all right. So let's keep going here. Uh we're encrypting the letter N using the N key. So here's our N key. And here's N. So I'm coming down. And it looks like it's the letter A. So A, I'm going to put right here. Next, we're using the C key. And I'm encrypting the letter E. So here's a C key, and I'm encrypting the E. That's going to be a G. Using the I key here, the I key, we're encrypting the letter R. So R at the top, and right, looks like a Z. Next one in Visioneer, last letter of Visioneer that we're encrypting. We're back to using the D key again. And using the D key, we're encrypting the letter E. So that is an H. Okay. So I'll encrypt that. Next, I'm encrypting the I with an A key. So here's our A key right here, encrypt an I, and we know that if you're using the A key, it's just write that letter down. Okay, next we're encrypting the letter S with the V key. So here's our V row right here, and I'm looking for the S, and I'm going to write an N. Almost done here. Next, we're encrypting the letter S with the I key. So I is here. And let me drag this across. And the S is going to be an A. So now you can see here before I finish that we, we encrypted S two different times, but because Visioneer uses a different key for each letter in the, the message, you can see that for this S, I wrote an N. For this S, I wrote an A. That's why they call this a polyalphabetic cipher, because it uses a different key for each letter in the message. And you can see another example of what I was just saying here. We have uh, the letter E three times in Visioneer, but we didn't write the same letter for an E any of those times. For this one, our cipher text is an M. For this one, our cipher text is a G. For this one, our cipher text is an H. So you can see that you couldn't use frequency 
analysis or crypto analysis to solve this easily. Okay, so back to finishing this out. Uh, we're encrypting the letter T with the N key. So here's our N key right here. We're encrypting a T. That would be a G. Next, we're encrypting an R with the C key. So here's the C key right here. And I'm encrypting an R. So that would be a T. And then next, we're encrypting the W with the, uh, excuse me, next we're encrypting a, uh, an O, an O with the I key. So here's the I key. And we're encrypting the letter O, which is right here, and that will be a W. Next, we're encrypting the letter N with the D key, and the D key is the top one up here. And we're encrypting the letter N, so we're going to write a Q for that. And last one, we're encrypting the G with an A key, so we can just write a G down there. So we're done. We just encrypted that by hand, and here is our ciphertext now. Remember, the ciphertext is our encrypted message, Y-I-B-M-A-G-Z-H, and then a space, and then uh, I-N, and then A-G-T-W-Q-G. Okay, and I'll go ahead and set that font to be a monospaced font as well. Okay, so that's our ciphertext. And let's see if we can run the program and come up with the same thing. By the way, let's. this tool will do it for you, but if you have blanks in your message, it doesn't work out correctly. So let's try it here. Our plain text is visioneer is strong. We've already set our key here so we can encipher it. And you see that it works um, up to the H. It works up to the H just fine. Why did it work up to the H? Because that's the first spot of a blank. So we couldn't use it to do the next letters after that because it, it gives us the wrong information. Okay? But the program should give us the right information. So let's go get the program. So in Blackboard, hopefully I've still got Blackboard up. Uh, so here's Blackboard and here's the lecture on the Visioneer cipher. And it has the code for a program in Python right here. You see where it's uh, purple that I'm pointing to? You can right click that and save that down and save it to a file on your computer. Okay, so I've saved it. I'm going to open it up with Tani. And hopefully I can find Tani running here. Yeah, there we go. So, most of our work here in this program, although it does quite a bit in the program, I, uh, to implement the Visioneer cipher because of it um, shifting that square over by one each time, you can use the modulo 26, 26 letters in the alphabet. You can use modulo to implement that Visioneer square without having to do it all by hand. But here's our message. So I'm going to start highlighting it there. And this is really, really long. 
you can see that what's in that message right now is the history of Alan Turing. Alan Turing. And he worked to break the code that was done by this German machine called an Enigma. An Enigma code machine. And believe it or not, the Enigma worked with us a form of the Visionaire cipher because it had these disks here that I'm pointing to that rotated at a speed that they set um, in their code books. And then as the person typed here on this keyboard, it would illuminate lights for the encrypted message. And these machines were used throughout World War II, and the Germans thought that they were secure. But in actuality, the British uh, code-breaking group had actually broken the code, had figured a way out without having one of the machines to actually break the code. So back to this. So this long message here is all about Alan Turing's life history and I have dra dragged across it and I'm just going to delete it. So you can see that it's got the three quotes here for a long string that could be a multi-line string. You don't have to use three quotes there if you don't want to. You can leave them. All this my message has to be is it has to be a string. So let's encrypt the visioneer. V-I-G-E-N-E-R-E -E -E, is strong. Okay. You remember that our key that we used was Da Vinci. Okay. And we're going to leave our mode set to encrypt because we want to encrypt that message. So let's try it. There is our encrypted message. I'm going to take that and copy it to the clipboard. And I'm going to flip back over here and paste it right here and see if we did it right. And we did. We got it exactly right, doing it by hand. Now, to go back to the plain text message, we could do it all by hand, but since we've got this program working, uh, all we need to do is change this mode to decrypt. And we need to put our ciphertext up here. So this is our ciphertext right here. I'll paste it up here and get rid of that. Okay, so this is our ciphertext right here. I've set the mode to decrypt. I've set my key. So I'm going to run this, and you can see it came back with the correct message. Visioneer is strong. So you will be given on the exam, you will be given perhaps ciphertext, you will be given a key, and it may ask you what was the plain text message. And so you would have to do what we just did here. Or it may ask you to encrypt something using the Visioneer cipher and uh, a key that it provides. And again, those are fill in the blank questions, so you have to paste the answer exactly as it's found right there. So uh, that's the Visionaire cipher. I would encourage you to read through all of the material. You can see that it is very, very strong. This is uh, this is actually the number of combinations that you would have to try in order to break it with a key that's 14 long. Now our key was D-A-V-I-N-C-I. So we had, I guess, six. So there were 308 million combinations 
of keys that could possibly have been for that one message. So you can see that using a longer key uh, is beneficial. The longer the key, the more secure the message. Just like your password, the same way with your computer password, they ask you to use a long password so that uh, at least eight characters, I think, so that you're getting into a large number of possible combinations there. So that's the end of this lecture. Good luck with the encryption this week.